welcome back to the third tips and tricks videos uh, from me for the Behringer Neutron. Um, I'll get right to it. The first one is changing the speed of the LFO over time. So if I trigger a note, you can hear that the LFO is the same rate all the way through. So what I'm going to do is going to connect an envelope and we're going to connect it to an attenuator in and we're going to come out of the attenuator and we're going to plug it into LFO rate. So now the sustain controls where the speed lands. The attack is how long it takes to build up to maximum so without This is quite useful, you can get like helicopter sounds. And the attenuator is controlling the amount, so if I put that at max, that controls what max is. So I'm just going with that. that. Sounds good. Okay, so now instead of going straight into the LFO rate from the attenuator, let's malt it and let's have one going from the malt back into LFO rate and we'll have the second one, we'll have that going through a second attenuator, so attenuator two in and we'll come out of the second attenuator and we're going to go into oscillators one pitch reason is we're only listening to oscillator one now we've sent the same modulation envelope two into the pitch as well and we've got a separate attenuator we can choose how much of that modulation goes into the pitch through attenuator two so let's tune this up a little bit Right, so the next one is creeping in the LFO. <clears throat> so what we want to do is kind of make it creep in over time. It starts with no modulation and brings it up. This is something that you can sort of, other synthesizers have like a fade in option for the LFO, but there's no way on this to attenuate the mod depth without the patch bay. So we're going to try and do that. So we want to get the LFO. Want to put that in an attenuator. We want to come out of that attenuator and we want to go into the frequency model. It's connected like that anyway, but this allows us to have control over it because now we can get attenuator one CV and we can control that by envelope two. So envelope two out to attenuator one CV in. Now the envelope should be controlling the amount of mod depth over time. So let's put it on a ramp. Slow this down, put it back to a sign. Okay. 
There we go. And now you've got some full control over it with the envelope. And when you sustain it, you can choose where it is as well. So technically, if I put release on it, put the sustain low, it should come up and back down again. So that's the second one. Okay, so for this last one, it's a little bit simpler, but essentially what we're gonna do is try and bypass one oscillator from the filter. Sometimes this is useful for when you wanna sign underneath maybe a resan, a square with pulse width or something like that, that you're filtering the square, but you're leaving the sign alone, which keeps the base there. So let's try and do that. The way I would do it is I would go oscillator one, into sum A. I'm going to go oscillator 2 into VCF in. Then you want to come out the VCF, so VCF at 1 out, put that in sum B. And then you want to take the output of the sum and put that into the amp VCA in. So now you can see, or hear, first oscillator is a sign. So moving the filter isn't going to, isn't going to add harmonics. These harmonics are coming from the second oscillator. So now, sound stays thick. You still got the ability to modulate. Let's try doing that. What's the later two? Right, I'm going to leave it there today. Hopefully I'll think of some more. Um, thanks for your time, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you soon.